Well, hello there and welcome back to my happy place. Today we're going to do episode number six in my So Simple Shapes remix series. So the shapes that we're going to be using for this month, which is the August block, is my happy place. These are my new shapes where my sew along will be starting here in the middle of September. And uh, these are the shapes that I've used to make these cute jars. So what I'm gonna show you is just how to make one of these jars. And um, I kind of want you to think outside the box, go with your own ideas and do what you want with these jars. Like you could just keep going clear out and make a long runner. You could make a quilt with making layers of these different rows. But I thought it would be fun to put just four together um, all of this is my stitch fabric, and I thought that would be really fun to remember last month when I did the teapot, how I sewed my cheater cloth to the bottom of the background to kind of look like the tea kettle was sitting on a tablecloth or a table, and so I thought that would be really fun. You know, these are like sitting on a shelf, the canning jar. So this brings back a lot of memories. And I know I use canning jars and mason jars in a lot of my quilt designs, but I also use them around my home a lot. And of course I still can every season. And so I thought it would be really fun to just take a few of the shapes from the set and make one jar so that you can just do what you want with it. Just a single block. You could, you know, do pillows, quilts, runners, whatever you wanted to do, put them on project bags, anything like that. So, I have the fabric cut to make one jar. These are my little tops that I cut off from here and I'll show you a little bit later what I mean by that. So here's my one and seven eighths inch strip that works for the lid of the jar. Let me move that out of the way so you can kind of see half and half of what I'm doing. All right, and I'll show you how I run that through the maker in just a minute. But um, let's go through the shapes first. Oh, I said all of this was my stitch fabric, but I forgot for the label, which is this square right here. I used my cloud shabby fabric. So this is called Shabby Gray Cloud. It's in my shabby collection. I have several colors in my shabby collection. So I thought that would be really perfect because I'm using this background in gray and I just, I don't know, I thought that would be great with the gray for the lids. And so that's what that piece of fabric is. But let me grab these four shapes. So for the jar, we've used L30 and so I've just taken my piece of sewing interfacing, placed it on there and traced around it, okay? And then here's the piece of fabric that I'm gonna be making today's jar out of. Now, before I continue on, I wanted to show you this. Remember, um, this is my binder for my sew along guide, but I have my open set of shapes in here. But I wanted to show you that um, in my first binder that I put out, remember I have the guide in here that tells you what size to cut all of the shapes. And so we'll be adding in here on the back, the ones for my happy place. But they are in this guide right now, which is a free PDF download. So this is the guide. So here's all the cutting for each piece that I'm showing you of what we'll be using. So here's the heart. L38, and so you just turn to L38 right here, and you can see that you need to cut your fabric and your interfacing three and a half by four. And the L17 is right here, so three and a half by four and a half. And then the L8 for the label is four and a half by four and a half. Now, these two shapes right here are actually two of the bonus shapes that are not used in the quilt because I put two extra bonus shapes in the set because I knew that I wanted to do this for the series. 
And let's see, all right. Let's set that aside so I can continue on. All right, so now I've got my heart. So I just trace that with my sewing interfacing. This is the sewing interfacing that I use. So I've got that traced. I'm using this red fabric for the heart. So I just put that on there, ready to sew. And then I've got this for the top of the jar, okay? And after I shape and sew that, I will show you, but I actually end up trimming some off so it will fit down in there, but I'll show you on it after I've sewn these. So I've got that, got that traced, okay? And then here's the label. So a simple shape for that. It's really been fun using my new stitch fabrics and sewing some things. I can't wait for the sew along to start. We have a little bit of extended time now. I don't know if you, I do have a blog post about that. And I put it on Instagram that, you know, because of the pandemic and everything that's going on, then um, we had some unforeseen shipping, you know, problems and delays. And so we just wanted to make sure everybody was able to get their fabrics and things like that. So we put it off for a couple, three weeks. So that will be starting in September instead of August. But all of that is on my blog. I'll leave a link and all of that. So, all right. So there's all of the pieces for that. But before we go over to the machine, I wanted to talk about the label. And okay, what I did with the label so I have one going here so I could show you because I like to have this embroidered. Now, of course, this is just optional. So after I sew this so simple shape and turn it, I, I mark it with a pencil. So I just wanna go ahead and show you how I do that. And again, of course, this is optional, but it's just kind of a detail that I think is pretty fun. And it just adds a little bit of character so after I've turned that, let me grab my basket of washi tape. Okay, so I've got one of my washi tapes here from one of my sets that is actual inch measurements and increments. And so what I do with that, now you can just freehand this easily, which is what I do where the stitches go, I do like to mark them just so that I'm sure to get them even as I'm stitching. But what I like to do is um, grab my washi tape Okay, let me put the end over here. I just pull a length of it off. And because it has quarter inch increments there let me turn it this way so you can see. I'll just kind of tape that right there. And so you can go ahead and take your pencil and mark where these lines are, just a short pencil line right there. And I don't do a really long line, I just kind of mark it right there so I know that it's even. And then as I'm stitching along, I can decide you know, how long I want to make the stitches. And how I do that is I just use three strands of my Aura Floss. You can use any, literally any that you want, you know, embroidery floss. But this is for my Aura Floss set, and this is 2250, and it comes in six strands. And I just separate it so that I have three strands. And I use my embroidery needles which are the ones that are aqua right here. And I just knot the back and I simply just cover over my pencil line. Now you can just do one stitch at a time if you want, but I kind of like to do two. So that's what it looks like if you do one. The reason I like to do two is because I feel like it's faster, number one, but I also feel like it's a little bit more even if I'm doing that. 
at the same time. So then I'll just pull them, smooth that out, and then I just go ahead. And I don't know, there's just something about a dark thread, like a red or a denim or something going around the outside of the label that I just feel kind of frames it. And so that's how I do that stitching. All right. Okay, now one more thing before we go over to sewing I want to show you is how I do the bias tape. So let me move this block, put it back up on my design wall. Okay, so for the lid of the jar, you cut one and seven eighths inches wide or tall, however you want to say that. And grab my iron. My spray bottle, it's got half and half uh, Mary Ellen's Best Press and water in that. And then when I've got my strip, what I like to do first is cut a point at the end. Okay, and that'll make it easier to run through the maker. And then this is the one inch wide one. All right, let me move that mat. So I like to spray this because it has a little bit of starch in it. It'll kind of help keep it, you know, keep the shape and hold it. And then I will go ahead and just press the tip right here so that it's dry. And then I'll go ahead and thread that through at the top so that the point comes out. All right, I'm gonna to try to do this so you can see it. So you'll tell me, sis, if I go out of the screen. Mm -hmm. All right, so I just start pressing with the point. And then I just, I'm using this hand right here to kind of even it out keep the correct tension and I just follow with the iron very slowly. I don't want to touch the iron to this metal bias tape maker because of course I don't want to burn myself. Okay, I'm running out of iron cord, so I'm gonna to have to <laughs> pull this down. I normally don't do that, but all right. So my iron's plugged clear over by my machine. So now when I get to the end, I just let it cool down and let it dry. And also let me talk about, I call this bias, but I do just cut it across the width. I don't cut it on the bias because I kind of nickname it straight bias, even though I know that really kind of doesn't make sense because bias means on the bias. But because of my sew alongs, sometimes I need to cut it on the actual bias and then I just cut it with the fabric so it's straight bias. So I do say, either straight bias or on the bias bias. I know that sounds really confusing, but at least I just say it that way so that you know if you cut it straight a grain or you need to cut it on the bias. All right, so when I get to this point, I just kind of bend this over by about an inch. You don't really need to measure. Let me go grab my small ruler right here. And then I want to measure, it's really hard to see on this ironing surface. So let me bring this in so you can kind of see what I'm doing. All right. So I want this to measure where it bends, meaning I want the width of this to be about four or four and a quarter inches. So I just use my ruler and I'm just gonna bend it like that. Bring this back over to the iron and just press that and then I'll go ahead and cut that okay and I can keep making more that was just uh, half the width of fabric so you can get four you can get four jars jar lids out of one one and seven eighths by with the fabric strip so see, now that's all ready to go. All right. 
Okay, so I wanna make sure I've told you everything before we go over to the machine and sew the shapes. So we've got that ready to go. We've got all the shapes traced. All right, so we'll go over there, go to the machine and sew, and then I'll come back here and show you how I assemble the block. Okay, so here I am at the machine. And when I say the machine, this is Sweet Baby James, named after James Taylor. And um, isn't he gorgeous? So I had him custom painted by the Featherweight Shop in my color denim. And super happy with him. I've been sewing with him for the last little while. And so I had to introduce him to you. All right, so what I do is I'm just gonna start sewing with a regular stitch length. But if you're worried that your stitches are too big, if you normally stitch with a bigger length, then you can tighten them up. So I, I normally do kind of stitch with a smaller length. So, and um, I don't like to start on a corner. I just kind of like to go in and sew right directly on the line, face up fabric, okay, face up where I marked. I wanna be able to see where I marked. And I just use a pencil for that because you're sewing right on that line and you're not gonna see those edges when you turn them. You have several layers of fabric to cover that up. So I don't use a friction pen or anything like that. You can if you would like, but it, it makes a thicker line that has to be covered up. And so I just like a mechanical pencil so you can have a thin line. And so when I sew, I do not backstitch, I just over sew. I don't wanna backstitch over my line because I don't wanna add bulk or maybe miss, because I'm trying to sew right on the line. So if I backstitched, what if I went off the line? That's gonna make this not straight. So I just kind of over sew to where I can see what I'm doing instead of going backwards. And so I'm just gonna sew a little bit and, uh, show you what I do when I get to the corners. So I just sew in there and I just start on the line here. Now I don't need my seam so easy guide on here, you know, to sew my shapes because I'm just sewing on the line, but I always have it taped onto here. So I don't want you to think that's necessary for the so simple shapes. Now when I get to the corner, I just pivot. When I'm doing a curve like this, I just go a little bit slower, but um, I always use a foot that is open here so that I can see the needle, so that I can see exactly where my line is the whole time. So as I'm sewing, I can see exactly where that needle goes in and I don't want it to go under the foot and I just have to guess that I'm on the line. I mean, I don't, I don't wanna guess, I wanna know what I'm doing. And I usually have you know, I'm usually a little bit closer, kind of like scrunched up to my machine a little bit, but I, I don't want to do that because I want you to be able to see what I'm sewing, but I actually do, you know, just get a little bit closer if I need to. If I can't see that line, then, you know, I'll put on my readers or something like that, but you just want to mark with something that you can see, even if it has to be a thin black, some kind of a, um, like a fabric, marking pen or, you know, like a, uh, what are those called? Those sakuras, I don't know how you say it, but you know what I'm talking about. And just whatever you have to do to mark so that you can see your lines, that's most important. And I always have good lighting. And of course I have my lights off around my machine right now and I have this light here because I don't want it to glare for the camera, but I do always have good light. So see how I just kind of pivoted around those curves? And then I just keep coming, and this is where I started. See where I sewed in? And so when I get to that point, I'm just gonna over sew by about a half inch or an inch, three quarters of an inch, and now I know that's completely secure. Now, I won't waste my thread by taking this out and clipping it, I'll just go ahead and put in another piece. I'm just going to do the same thing with that. Sew to the line, turn, and once I sew a little bit of it, and this, the, you know, the first piece starts to get in the way, I'll just grab my scissors and clip that off and just keep sewing. All right, so I'm just going to continue sewing these and then I'm going to trim them with an approximate quarter inch seam allowance 
and then I'll show you what I do next. Alright, so I've just got all of these trimmed and I go, you know, an approximate quarter inch, maybe a little bit smaller, kind of like this. And you can clip off the corners a little bit if you want to. And now I'm going to show you how I clip them and then turn them. So these two pieces do not need to be clipped because this is an outer curve and these are just straight lines. So when I turn them right side out, there's not gonna be a problem with them laying flat. This one has a cleavage or a V. And so what I did with that is when I was trimming it around, I clipped right to my stitching line right here, not, not into my stitching and not past it. But if I did that on accident, before I turned it, I would just put it under the machine and just reinforce that before I turned it, okay? And so that's how that has to be clipped. And then this one right here has just a few inner curves right here on the jar neck. And so I just take some small scissors so I can see what I'm doing and I'll just clip like one, two, three, right like that. So you don't need to clip a lot but you just want to clip so that when you turn that right side out, oops, it's going to lie flat. So then I'll just do the same thing on this side, just one clip to the thread and not past it. That one may be a little bit closer there. Okay, and then I'll take a seam ripper or my scissors. Now this is a big piece, so I can show you this. I'll either just pinch my interfacing away from my fabric and I'll just cut just one cut right there so that I can go ahead and cut an X. And that really is all I need to turn that. I don't need a great big. Or I can take, if I don't want to pinch it apart or if they're smaller pieces, I'll take my seam ripper and you just have to be careful when you do this. I just lay it flat and get the tip of my seam ripper there and then I just fill under here to make sure it hasn't come through to the fabric and just rip a little bit so that I can go ahead and make a couple clips like that, okay, for the heart. And then same thing with this. Just take my seam ripper. I always check on the back. And then I'll go ahead and just cut an X so I can turn my other piece fill back there. You know, you can turn it if you just have one cut across this way, but I have found if you just make a little X, you have a little bit more opening that you can get your fingers in there, you know, a lot easier. And that's what I do is I just turn, okay? Use my finger to kind of push out those shapes. I mean, that's pretty good the shape and the weight of the interfacing. You know, my, I really like my sewing interfacing for this. When I first started doing this, I was using a lightweight and from Pellon and it just, I don't know, it was too hard to rip through and things like that. And so I finally used some Pellon and packaged it for a while. It's a great product, but I even, I um, decided to come up with something a little bit different too. So this is, this is a weave that I came up with, and I really like that. Okay, I just like the strength. I like that it's not too thick and it's not too thin, and it gives body to my appliques. So here's the turner right here, and if you feel like you need to push out more, then you can just barely push the fabric out. And how I do that is I have my interfacing facing me, and then I'm just not the point is not even on the interfacing, it's on the fabric part. 
like right there. You can see that going across. And that way I'm just barely gently pushing, but that's all you need in uh, you know cotton fabric. You just need to barely push it out a little bit. And that helps it at that point. And then I'll usually take my seam roller and just kind of roll those edges. I'm not worried about getting this flat, the iron will do that. I'm just kind of going over the edges and setting them a little bit, just kind of squishing them together. And I mean, that's perfectly great. You probably don't even need an iron, but I usually will just take it over here and just give it a quick press just to make sure it's set. Now I can take my uh, clapper here, the quilter's clapper, the wood, absorbs the heat and so it absorbs it fast and it's got weight to it and so it it makes that lie flat without the clapper it works too but it just it helps with it you can see it's much flatter and when i say flat because they're applique pieces i don't want them super flat like a pancake like you can't see some dimension. I really like to where you can see a little bit of dimension. That's what makes your blocks right here. See, I haven't applicated them down, but I like the layering that you can see. I like the look of that. Otherwise, it looks just like a printed fabric, and I don't want that. I, you know, if I'm going to go through the work of doing all these separate pieces, I, you know, I want to show that texture, and that's just that's just me. But you can work with them and make it a, make them as flat as you want. And then I just continue turning and shaping. Now this heart I'm gonna show you because of the points. So when you turn it on pieces like this that has a lot of shaping, it's really hard to get it to look right unless you use this um, point to point turner by Clover. And I just do the same thing that I showed you in the oval but I just do it very slow and I like to control how far I push that and how hard I push that. And I just kind of pinch that between my fingers as I go around. When I get to the point, I like to turn it sideways and see how this has a nice flat point. If it was round, it really wouldn't work. So I like to push that up sideways and I'm kind of pushing on all of the seams inside there and just pushing them out to a nice point. Let's see, I like how that looks. And then I just continue going around. And it's better to have to go over this like, like this several times than try to push it real hard and do it once. I'd rather just ease and push on that curve like that. Okay, and so this is what I'm trying to do when I'm pushing it out. I want to be able to see exactly where my thread is right there, where it meets. And that way I know that I'm doing it the exact same shape that I traced it. Now this sticks up a little bit, you know, because of the clipping, but that's not a big deal because I did clip it. See, that will go all the way down flat. And what I do, just use the roller right there. And then again, so those seams are flat right there, but the whole piece isn't really flat yet. And so you can bring it over here and, and just do the same thing with that. And with the square, you're just gonna do the same thing, turn it and press it and turn this and press it. Okay, so I'm gonna have all of these turned and I'm gonna go over, back over to the table where I'm gonna show you how to put this cute jar together. I'm going to um, announce last week's uh, giveaway winner and then I'm going to show you all the things that are in the giveaway for this week because I'm continuing on um, till the end of this month of my summer of giveaways to celebrate my one year anniversary of my channel. So I'll meet you back over to the table. All right so I thought before I um, showed you how to glue this up I would finish this up here so that I can uh, glue base this one down. I kind of like to stack the stitches on my needle and that's why I feel like I get them straighter if I you know, stack two or three at a time. So I've done this little stitch edging, edging quite a bit. I showed you that I did that on my leaves 
on my So Simple Shapes series quilt. Plus, if you did my Be Happy quilt or have seen my Be Happy quilt, I did this on all of the hexagons in the borders. And so that's what the back looks like. And then when I knot off, I don't want to go into my interfacing because it's red thread and I don't want to knot back here because I don't want it to show through. So I'll just go right under there, underneath one of the stitches and then make a loop. So I'm going right on the thread, not into the interfacing or the fabric and just using that thread to knot. And then, um, oh, let me grab my scissors. And then when I cut that off, I know that that will just be glue basted down and applique so it's not gonna come apart. And so, so I'm just gonna put my needle back in here. And then this is one thing I love about my Aura Floss is then you can just wind this right back over onto the spool. And then I just use this wood part right there. Put it back into my little bee bag. This block is a six inch block from um, my Farm Girl book, my Farm Girl Vintage book. And that's Farm Girl Vintage too. All right, so here I've got the jar. I've got the lid. I've got the label and I've got the heart. And what I like to do with something like this that I'm doing the whole, you can really just literally glue the whole thing together and then you have it, you know, singly as an entity. So you can just like put them separate, put them on top of each other, do whatever you wanna do. And that way it saves you time on, um, you know, trying to do them separately. So what I'm gonna do with that is just gonna put a few drops of Sioux glue on that. That was kind of a big drop, so I'm just gonna take that off. And, and then I'll just pick any side and center that as best as I can. I just look from here to here and from top to bottom. Don't wanna cover the stitches at the top, so I'll bring it down a little bit it doesn't bother me that that point goes down, see, and covers the stitches down here. I just kind of like them to show at the top. So that looks pretty centered to me. So I'll just set that over there. I might grab a few pins here and stick them right there to dry. Now, um, let me grab a cutting board, cutting mat. And I wanted to show you about this. So let's see, you can see this. This is the part that I cut off of that. And let's see, how are you gonna see these lines the best? Let me flip my mat over. You'll be able to see those lines better. So what I'm gonna do is measure in about an inch and a quarter, okay? Or once you do one, you can use this as a guide if you wanted to. But see, that's an inch one inch and a quarter to right here. And I'm just gonna cut straight across there. And now this is the piece that I'm gonna use for the cute little fabric top of the jar. Now I could tuck the whole thing under there if I wanted to, but I don't have to, you don't wanna have to worry about covering up the bottom pieces or anything like that when I go to place it under. So I just like to cut it off and it saves on bulk as well. Okay, so let's bring this back in. And I'll just take my glue right here. And I'll just put like a long thin line or a few dots all the way across there. And I'm just gonna place this so that this is about a quarter of an inch up on top there and about a quarter of an inch hanging over on the sides. All right. Now, if you want to take that and let that dry for a minute, usually I would just put a pin here, put a pin here. Wow, it's really starting to rain out there. If you can hear that thunderstorm out there. 
And so I will let that dry like that, you know, usually for a few minutes, but because I want to show you what's, you know, how I do this. Now I know that what I'm going to do is put that up there and then I'm going to end up folding those under and gluing, but I usually center this with about this top center. So what I'm going to do there is just very lightly put some glue across there. Sometimes depending on the temperature my glue comes out fast or slow. So so when I'm doing this I want to make sure you can still see the neck of the jar and I want to be able to see that the folds are even on both sides right here. And then um, let me grab my ruler again. Now, when you're just doing a single jar, you just want to do it, you know, how it looks cute. But if you're trying to do something like this, where you're doing several jars, you kind of want them to be the same height. And so I did these so that they stick up about an inch or an inch and an eighth from the top. And so they all, you know, kind of end up being approximately the same height so that when you're putting them next to each other, you know, they look pretty good like that. But if you're just doing a single one to put on a project bag or something like that, you don't, it doesn't really matter how tall it is. Just that jar that you're doing at that point needs to look the best. All right, so now I've got that glued. I flip that over and just put a little bit there. Fold that over. I always put my lid back on as much as I can. When I say always, I always try to remember to so that it doesn't dry out. I've never had a problem with it though. And then I can take a couple of pins. This way it just kind of flattens, the pins are just kind of flattening everything together. And I don't have anything to glue there, so I don't worry about that. Take these pins out. All right, and then I'm going to go ahead and put glue on the back here, and I'm going to make sure that I put glue on whatever knots that I have, and then I know that will even be more stable. So I'll just run a little bit around the edges along the stitching. And then for these, these jars right here, I measured three inches up. So I'll do the same thing. Just put it, put the ruler right here. This is the three inch mark. And so I'll just grab that like that, flip it over. So I know that's straight. And then I just kind of eyeball it from side to side here. Looks like it needs to go over a little bit more. Okay. And then you can go ahead and pin that. All right, so now I'll let that dry for a minute, but I do want to show you something that you can do with this jar, meaning you can use a few more shapes that's in the set. So here, here we have the four shapes that we used for this, but I wanted to show you in my set here. I saved a few, a few of these pieces out that I thought would be really cute. Okay, so remember the tomato pin cushion? That could go on there. And also the top. Let's see, where is it? Maybe it'd be easier if I showed you this way. So it's not distracting. So see, you can lay that on there. And you can put like a canning jar, a, a jar full of tomatoes. Okay, you can put... Um, this smaller L9 as a label if you wanted to and let's see where's the other one here it is these are see-through so I can't see this flower shape you can either do it that way or that way and you know there's larger circles or smaller circles that you can put in the middle and there are also a few other sized hearts in this set. There's this one. 
that you could use with this smaller label and put that heart in there if you wanted to and put it up higher or something. I don't know. There's just, there's a lot of different things that you can put on the jars and that's just this set. You know, you could find my other shapes from other sets to put, you know, maybe some fruit or things like that on there, but I think it's kind of fun. So I just kind of wanted to show you that option. All right, I think just from that amount of time we have that little chat, this should be dry enough that I can hold that up. But isn't that cute? I love that little jar all on its own. And if this was longer or wider, I could, you know, just keep adding. But for the four jars, what I did, I could trim this down if I wanted to, but I cut this piece right here 14 inches tall by 28 inches wide. And then I cut this piece right here 28 inches wide by seven inches tall. And then I just sewed them together. And then when I went and laid the jars down here, I kind of overlapped a little bit because this has a curved bottom. And I just, I thought it looked, you know, better to have that perspective, but I could just keep doing the width of the fabric and do this for a whole row for a runner or for one row in a quilt or something like that. But I really think this jar is kind of fun. And so I hope you have fun with it and uh, use your creativity to decide what you wanna do with this remix block number six. And all right, so I'm gonna go grab the name of the winner and um, the Cassidy pick from last week's giveaway and I'll be right back and show you the things that I have to, for the giveaway for this week. Okay, I'm back, Cass picked the name. And last week's winner in my crochet video is Patty Shulton. I think that's how you pronounce it. So, yay, congratulations, Patty. And I, I'll be leaving a comment on your comment and we'll get in touch that way. So let's talk about this week's giveaway. So because this is an applique giveaway, I'm gonna be giving, um, because it's a so simple shape tutorial, I guess I should say, I'm gonna be doing, giving away things to do with applique again. So I'm going to be giving away one thing of my sewing interfacing, and this is all for one person. I'll tell you the rules after I go through all of these. I'm gonna be giving away my stitch badge and one of my happy place badges. Okay, those are my badges that I do specifically for quilt market goers, but I think it's fun to give them away in my packages. Okay, so now I'm gonna be giving away Sue Daily Glue, a Clover Point to Point Turner, this package of my pretty pins, so they're applique, not the mini applique pins, but these are the applique pins with the colored heads, and those are the ones that I use for with my design boards. And some washi tape. This is my Granny Chic set. And one of my Seems So Easy guides. See, and it comes with these stickers that are a little bit more permanent, but I like to use washi tape for that, and you've seen that on my machine. So I'll also be giving away a set of my Quilty gift tags. I don't think I've shown you these before, but I love these. I use them all the time. Okay, they're packaged like this. So there's kind of like three packages all in one, but these are the small, medium, and large. But they have a lot of my applique blocks and, and uh, my artwork here. And you can use them for, you know, gift bags to decorate your sewing room, um, for quilt kits, if you're a quilt shop or something like that, to make cute kits, because I think that's important. You know, if you gotta do something, you gotta make it cute. That's my model, you know. And a package of my Nifty Needles and one of my mini cutting mats that I've done several years ago, and I love these, I use them all the time. A set of the My Happy Place So Simple Shapes, the brand new set, and a 10 inch stacker of my stitch fabric. There's 42 10 inch squares in there. And then last but not least, a small design board. So that's for one winner okay to enter the giveaway the rules are you need to be following my channel of course 
and please like this video. And then let's see, I think that because we did this super cute little canning jar block, why don't you use the word canning jar in your comment? And that way Cassidy will know when she goes to, you know, do the random pick thing for the winner that you want to be entered in that. So just leave me a comment and let me know in a sentence, just kind of be creative however you want, um, using the word canning jar. And let me know what you liked about this video and um, about my So Simple Shapes. And I will announce the winner of this week's giveaway on my video next week, which I will be doing a block tutorial of my schoolhouse block because you know, it's back to school time. So um, I've had a lot of requests for that. I told you that I would be doing that. And so I'm gonna be showing you how to make my 12 inch schoolhouse block. And so thanks so much for joining me today. And I hope you have fun with your cute little, cute little canning jar. Leave me a fun comment and let me know what you think. Use the word canning jar and I'll chat with you later.